Welcome back everyone, this is my video about the hidden Two-Face easter eggs during the Batman movie post credit scene that some of you have been asking me about. It's hidden inside the Riddler's final secret viral post that you can only see if you actually go to his special Rata Alada website in real life after the movie came out last week. The special new easter egg did not exist before last week, so we'll break it all down. It contains a bunch of different easter eggs, Two-Face is just one of the biggest new things buried in the newest teaser. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. And real quick shout out to my friends at Magic Spoon who asked to sponsor this video. Magic Spoon makes all those amazing tasting cereals that you remember from your childhood, the ones that were loaded up on sugar and candy flavoring, only Magic Spoon took all those great tasting candy cereals and made healthy versions. Zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. They're keto safe, gluten free, grain free, soy free, lactose free, if you're on any specific dietary plans. They sent me this giant crate with a whole bunch of their flavors. They have so many flavors, they're all good, but my favorites right now are the frosted ones and the oatmeal cookie ones. I'll put a link for their website in the description below. You can click it and get their variety pack sampler and be sure to use the promo code that they gave me and get $5 off any order from their website. The promo code is magicspoon.com slash emergency awesome. They're so confident that this cereal is the superior S tier cereal that they even offer a 100% money back guarantee refund on your purchases. So be sure to check it out. Don't eat breakfast like a wild animal anymore. Eat something good and be sure to use my promo code to get that discount. Link in the description below. But big spoiler warning for the Batman movie if you have not seen it, we'll be talking about the ending and the post credit scene. During the ending of the Batman movie, at Arkham Asylum, the Riddler watches as Batman saves the majority of all the people at the election, thwarting his plan, and Barry Keoghan's new version of the Joker is revealed to be in the cell next to his. Matt Reeves confirmed it. He is supposed to be the Joker. He's not Two-Face. The actual Two-Face Easter egg comes a little bit later. There were just a lot of people that were confused about who it was supposed to be, but the hyena laugh at the end and all the talk about being a clown was meant to be very on-the-nose references to him being the Joker. He offers the Riddler some consolation, saying that Batman rained on his parade, but Gotham loves a comeback, giving him a riddle of his own, riddle me this, using the trademark Riddler catchphrase, offering friendship to the Riddler. Just teasing a big Joker-Riddler team up, according to Matt Reeves, they'll cover in the Batman Arkham HBO series, so you don't have to wait till the sequel movie, like three or four years, to get more of this new version of the Joker. He's not technically the Joker yet, he hasn't started calling himself that, but he does make a lot of references to being thought of as a clown by the people of Gotham and being feared by Gotham and says maybe it's not so bad being a clown. Very on the nose, like I said. But the big Two-Face Easter egg is actually part of the larger Arkham Asylum Easter eggs that are in the post credit scene with the Riddler's final riddle, his final message on that Rata Alada website. Some of you probably spotted this if you visited the website after the movie came out. So the post credit scene is meant to be a teaser for the Secret Riddler video that he supposedly recorded at some point in the future. Like you thought that the last riddle was the one he gave to Batman. What's black and blue and dead all over? You. But this post credit scene is meant to be like a secret riddle that he supposedly recorded at some point in the future. Implying that he will either break out or he recorded it secretly and just didn't tell Batman. During the post credit scene, the text pops up as if someone has visited the website after the events of the movie and they're queuing up this new video to watch. Like the goodbye text with the question mark flashes and you hear the Riddler's heavy breathing and then it cuts to black. But that's not the end of it. The post credit scene is also meant to be a teaser to get you to actually visit the real life Rata Alada website that Warner Brothers created for the movie. That's right, it's a thing in real life. It's a website you can go visit. When you visit it, it boots up like this and you see all this text scrolling the big question mark here. It scrolls through a lot of DOS-like prompts and coded messages. Then it asks you to click at the text up at the top and when you do, it sends you to this new Riddler cipher like the ones that he was leaving for Batman. And decoded, this is what the cipher says. You think I'm finished, but perhaps you don't know the full truth. Every ending is a new beginning. Something is coming. But here's the thing, that's not even the end of it. The Riddler has more teasers and Easter eggs hidden in this Rata Lada website. If you remember when the website was scrolling through all these text and numbers here, the numbers themselves are meant to be really big Easter eggs for things in the movie and teasers for the next big part of the story, getting to the Two-Face and the Arkham Asylum of it all. So the number 2705-1939 is a reference to Detective Comics number 27 released in May 1939 which was the very first appearance of Batman and Gordon in the comics. Then the number 1, 3, 1940 is a reference to Batman number 1 from 1940, which was the first appearance of Catwoman in Joker in the comics. 
The number 5812-1941 is a reference to the first appearance of Penguin, Detective Comics number 58 from December 1941. The number 140-10-1948 is a reference to Detective Comics number 140 in October 1948, which was the first appearance of the Riddler. The number 405-3-1987 is a reference to Batman number 405 from 1987, which is the first appearance of Carmine Falcone. The number 16-4-1943 is a reference to Batman number 16 from 1943, which is the first appearance of Alfred in the comics. Then the number 3 4 20, 22 is a reference to the Batman movie's release date in real life, March 4th, 2022. And the last number is the real big one. 258 10 1974 is a reference to Batman number 258 from 1974, which was an issue all about Two Face breaking out of Arkham Asylum. And it was also the first appearance of Arkham Asylum in the comics. So all these post credit scene Easter eggs from Rata Alada taken into context in the Riddler's message, something is coming, is meant to be a reference to the Arkham Asylum HBO series, the next part of the story, where we'll see more villains appear in Arkham Asylum and them introducing a version of Harvey Dent. The reason why it makes so much sense that Matt Reeves would do a version of Two-Face, not only is he a really iconic Batman villain, but also he's a huge part of Batman The Long Halloween, which heavily inspired the movie. There were a lot of scenes directly ripped out of The Long Halloween story like Batman vs. Catwoman, the backstory between Carmine Falcone and Thomas Wayne about him saving his life, also the story about Catwoman believing that her father was Carmine Falcone, all directly taken out of The Long Halloween. But the whole killer storyline revolves around Two-Face. It's his wife who is the holiday killer going around killing all these mob members to get revenge. Long Halloween is also basically a Two-Face origin story. Like he starts out being Harvey Dent and becomes Two-Face by the end of the story. Now because Matt Reeves was hyping up doing so many Batman villain origin stories, that was his big reason for setting this during Batman Year 2. He's not going to introduce him as Two-Face when we see him for the first time. He'll start as Harvey Dent and then slowly become a version of Two-Face. We just watched the Riddler kill Gil Coulson. He was the last district attorney. Harvey Dent is the district attorney when he becomes Two-Face. Now that there's a vacancy in that job, we can actually see him fill that role through the next part of the story and into the sequel movies and then slowly eventually become a version of Two-Face. It's the exact same thing with Gordon eventually becoming the police commissioner. Pete Savage, the old commissioner, was killed by the Riddler, and even though Gordon already had another police captain above him in the movie who took over for Pete Savage after his death, Police commissioners are actually elected or appointed by the local government. So just because Gordon has superiors within the Gotham City PD above him, he can still be elected commissioner in the sequel movies, or maybe they'll wait till later in the franchise to do that. They kind of took that path during the Dark Knight trilogy. Harvey Dent was introduced, became Two-Face in that sequel movie, and that's also around the same time that that version of Gordon was appointed police commissioner. I have seen some casting rumors on websites the past couple of days about them going after Oscar Isaac as a new version of Two-Face in this Batman movie universe with Robert Pattinson, but for right now, those are just rumors. Most of you will remember Oscar Isaac is currently playing Moon Knight for Marvel, and he's going to be crossing over with a bunch of other future Marvel movies and future Avengers movies, so he is pretty busy. He's an amazing actor, though, so he'd be a huge get for DC as a version of Two-Face. I feel like he could crush it as Two-Face. Side note, I will be doing full episode videos for Moon Knight when it starts later this month too. You don't have to wait that long for more Moon Knight trailer footage either. But post all your Two-Face casting picks in the comments below. Who do you want to play this new version of Two-Face in the Robert Pattinson Batman movies? Some of you may remember a long time ago that Billy D. Williams inside the Tim Burton Batman movies was going to become a version of Two-Face had Tim Burton and Michael Keaton stuck around to do another movie together. He was Harvey Dent in that first Batman movie, but they never really did Two-Face in Batman Returns. So I think they were saving that for the third movie had they done it because they did do a version of Two-Face, but it wound up being Tommy Lee Jones. Obviously, that was the Joel Schumacher era of Batman, so it was way over the top, even though I do have a soft spot for Jim Carrey's version of the Riddler and Tommy Lee Jones' version of Two-Face. The funny stories about the two of them trying to get along behind the scenes are almost as entertaining as the actual movie itself. Tommy Lee Jones apparently could not stand Jim Carrey, which sounds very on-brand for Tommy Lee Jones. I've got a couple other Batman videos that I'm working on this week. Make sure to go see the movie if you haven't seen it and you're just watching these videos just to get all the Easter eggs. Congratulations, Drake Brunette. You're the giveaway winner for my last big Batman video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my Batman movie ending scene with the Joker, the post credit scene, and click here for my full breakdown of the Batman movie with all the Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.